quite sure until I've done it, to be honest. So, uh, hello. Uh, this is the Crown Public House, uh, which is not too far uh, from where we are sat tonight. And to me, this is one of the most important uh, historical um, sites of music heritage, not just in Birmingham or the UK, but actually the world. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, if this slide turns. In America, they seem to understand the role that popular music culture plays in forming identity. This is the rather splendid uh, um, Seattle music experience in Seattle, where, which uh, celebrates Seattle music history, unsurprisingly. It seems as America is a young country, they understand that popular culture is formative in their history. This is another wonderful building. This is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. You can see the guitars outside. And it's, as I say, it's a, it's a fabulous looking building. A bit more uh, statesman-like or a bit more uh, important looking is the Country Hall of Fame, and this is in one of the most recognisable cities in the world, or music cities in the world, and of course I mean Nashville. Not to be outdone, uh, this is the Bristol, uh, or the birthplace of Country Music Museum, uh, and I dread to think what the exhibits are like if they're talking about the birthplace, but this is in Bristol, uh, and Bristol USA, not Bristol, down 60 miles down the road. If you're a musician, they also celebrate the individuals. This is the Johnny Cash Museum, where you can find out all you need to know, and probably things you don't want to know, about the great man in black. You can buy uh, Johnny Cash underpants if you so wish. That's also in Nashville. But it's not just America where they celebrate popular music uh, history. This is the Australian Jazz Museum, in uh, what was in Tal uh, Tamworth. And I'm not sure what it is about these English town names, but it was in Tamworth, and it's now relocated to uh, Melbourne, but it does what he says on the tin, it's the Australian Jazz Museum. And even in Denmark, that powerhouse of popular music, and I apologise to any Danes in the audience <laughs> for being slight on that, have a music uh, dedicated to the Danish rock uh, culture. This is the rather garish uh, building in Rockside. But of course we've tried it in the UK. We've had the uh, Centre for National Pop Music in Sheffield, which lasted a year. Uh, this was the British music experience, which lasted five years in London, closed with £16 million worth of losses, and is soon to reopen in Liverpool. And talking of Liverpool, here is the Cavern Club. Not the original Cavern Club, that was around the corner. But with the Cavern, uh, with, alongside the Beatles, the Cavern Club uh, has played a role in Liverpool becoming a UNESCO city of music and brings in millions of dollars into the city. My personal favourites are the DIY museums. This is the Ramones Museum in Berlin, created by uh, Flo Haler, whose girlfriend said, get rid of all your Ramones stuff or I go, and he did what any sensible person would do and started a museum. <laughs> this is the, the, uh, the area that, that helps him sustain the museum. It's a cool neighbourhood bar. People come to eat, drink, chill out. Uh, talk about the, uh, the Ramones, and it, like I say, it helps financially, it helps to sustain him. What I love about this museum is the handmade quality, so it's all his personal collection. He made the uh, museum himself. Uh, you have, uh, and over time, people have started to donate materials to it, so the band, the manager, close friends have all added to that uh, museum to help it grow. And he gets touring museums who are uh, touring musicians, touring museums, touring musicians who come and play intimate gigs for him and his mates, and he has a, a jolly good time and before they go off and play elsewhere in Berlin. Closer to home and pushing the, uh, the Berlin Museum for, for my favourite is the Coventry Music Museum. Yes, Coventry Music Museum, started by Pete Chambers. Uh, it's again a handmade and its connection to the personal uh, objects are just fantastic. It's in Wallsgrave, which is fairly difficult to get to in, in, in Coventry, but it attracts over 9,000 people a year. 9,000 people go to Wallsgrave in Coventry to look at this, uh, this museum. It's been voted the number one uh, cultural attraction on TripAdvisor, although to be fair, there's not much competition. <laughs> uh, I apologise, in Coventry. Uh, this is the stage uh, where, uh, in the Crown, the, the building we saw first, where Black Sabbath had their first gig, where Bonham and Plant would hang out and jam, where, um, oh, this is going too quick. This is Mother, I'm going to quick. This is Mother's, another venue in Erlington High Street where uh, it was voted the best club venue in the world in 1970, where anyone who's anyone played uh, between 68 and 71, Pink Floyd recorded there. Uh, um, John Peel was the, the DJ. And so, uh, what I'm looking to do is start a Birmingham Music Museum. I want to bring people in to the city. I want the, you and the other people to celebrate our music heritage. I want uh, visitors to come, whether it's jazz, gospel, metal, rock, hip-hop, whatever it might be. That's gone too quick. So if there's anyone with a shitload of cash or a building to spare, come and see me. <laughs> <laughs>